Coming up on show 863, Hyundai launch Ionic as an electric car sub-brand. They're taking it seriously. Stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus on the podcast today, talking about an exciting event in Cincinnati, a virtual event this Thursday, how Lucid Air is looking to rock the world with their long range and job postings at Giga Berlin. Give us an insight into what the heck is going on with Tesla's cell plans. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, the edition to start a brand new week, and I hope you're fine and dandy today. It was a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing. Mini heat wave here in the UK, so about 30 degrees. What's that, 95, 96 Fahrenheit? All too hot for me. But whatever you were doing, hopefully having fun. Here we go with a brand new week. Monday, 10th of August today. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story, so you don't have to. little reminder, by the way, if you missed the Saturday special, on Saturday we were chatting to the Director of Sustainability, Sam Aaron's at Lyft, the ride-sharing company, but they do so much more, actually. A bit of a disservice calling them that. was talking about how they have made a commitment to go all electric by the year 2030. And that is going to make a huge difference when you think about how many working vehicles Lyft have and will have over the next 10 years. I'd recommend you go check it out if you are even half interested in your feed. So our fourth Zoom e-vroom Zoom event is happening this Thursday, says the city of Cincinnati. It's providing insight into how dealerships are being educated on and how dealerships play a role in the adoption of EVs. Uh, Trey Wooste of Beachmont Auto Group will be your host along with myself on Thursday. If you want to join the Zoom call, it's an online video conference chat about EVs and EV work being done in and around Cincinnati. Any of my listeners in that area, little public service announcement right now. Uh, Normally, uh, if you're watching a webinar, it's pretty passive, but this is all about being active and interacting with the hosts, with Trey and myself, and also uh, getting your point across as well. These Zoom calls that are under the banner of EV Cincy, uh, all about sparking conversation. So when and where? Right, this Thursday, August 13th, 2pm Eastern. So that is the day and date to put in your diary. And if you would like to uh, find out more, uh, just Google EV Cincy, EV space C-I-N-C-Y. These are the Eve Room Zoom calls, which the city are putting on to educate people about EVs. Long-term listeners know when they listen to my sponsors at the end of the show uh, that uh, some local businesses do sponsor the show, which is why I was delighted to offer my services. Okay, Hyundai has announced the launch of its all-new Ionic electric sub-brand. And if you're thinking, isn't that the name of one of their cars? You'd be absolutely correct. They're using a name which has worked very well over two generations of their electric car, the Ionic, to launch an electric car sub-brand. The Ionic, uh, which will see the introduction of three zero emissions models over the next four years. Now, the first one is going to be a production version of a concept car that we only know so far as the Hyundai 45. But we've seen some spy pictures, we've seen the concept car pictures, and it's stunning inside and out as well. And the specs, the performance specs, this I forget what they are, I couldn't find them today, but uh, I have reported on them in the past. Really, really good as well. Uh, They've pulled out all the stops with this, says Driving Electric, taking its name from Hyundai's established family hatchback, which of course you can get in electric and hybrid and plug-in as well. Ionic will be a brand dedicated to pure battery electric vehicles. All models will use the company's EG GMP platform, or as I like to call it, the eGIMP, developed by the sister company Kia. I believe this one has 800 volt architecture, but again, wasn't mentioned at all today. But that means very, very quick charging because they're making cars here for the next, you know, three to five years. This is the roadmap, and so by then. Very fast chargers will be cropping up everywhere, and so you'll be able to use those 800-volt systems. The first model to launch won't be called Hyundai 45. It will be the Ionic 5. It will be a production-ready, mid-size, pure electric SUV, and it will be rivaling cars like the Volkswagen ID4, the Polestar, the Tesla Model Y. Based on the Hyundai 45, the Ionic 5 will arrive early next year in 2021. Well, the EV dedicated platform will allow Hyundai to reimagine the interior of the vehicle. So it's a platform that, again, it's the Kia platform that's all about making the most of space, clearing the batteries below you so you can have adjustable seats, uh, you can have unique features, uh, wireless connectivity are going to be built into these cars. Uh, it's, a, it's a platform shift which makes them match ready, match fit even, for the next five to ten years. They announced Hyundai Motor Group. Thank you. 
announced they want to sell, as a group, want to sell a million pure electric cars uh, over the next, oh, now, what was it? I forget. It was 2025. That was it. So that was cumulative until 2025. Uh, They call it Strategy 2025. And they want to become the world's third largest car of EVs by 2025. And they want to be selling 560,000 of them a year by the middle of the decade, in addition to fuel cells, they say. Oh, bless the Koreans. They just can't they just can't put a press release out without using those last three words. And we'll sell fuel cell cars. Of course you will. Of course you will. So uh, that is the news today. And uh, a couple of questions that I had that I think I seem to have found answers to. What will the badge be on the front? Will it be a Hyundai badge or will it be an Ionic badge? As in, is Ionic their own sub-brand like Polestar is of Volvo. It's a Polestar badge, but no, it'll be the Hyundai badge. It will be the Hyundai Ionic 5. I think that you put the Hyundai name first. I believe that's how they're going to do it. Does it mean the end of the existing vehicles? No. Will they be named Ionic cars? No. So there's going to be the Kia e-Niro, the Hyundai Kona, and the cars they make at the moment, those aren't going away. The Ionic will probably be around in another iteration, or maybe even the current one, by the middle of the decade. So there'll be the Hyundai Ionic 5, 6 and 7 will be the three cars, but they will continue to sell the existing Ionic. Confused? Well, I understand, you know, they've got the name, they've probably got the website, they've probably got the Twitter handle and the social media uh, already because they've had the name for the the car itself, the car model. So it makes sense as the name's in the family to then expand it to a whole electric sub-brand, but surely take off the car Ionic from being on sale before you launch the Ionic 5 and put that on sale. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll pull it from sale uh, as they get closer to the time. We'll see. I just think it's a little confusing at the moment, but I know they, they have a plan. Right, Lucid just released a teaser video which showed a range figure of 442 miles for the Lucid Air. Uh, will it beat the Tesla Model S? No doubt about it. Uh, recently, the Model S became the first EV to have an EPA range of 402 miles. However, this teaser video shows of the Lucid Air uh, shows a counter ticking up and up and up and up and up. And as it fades out, the last frame visible is 442 miles. It's hard to see. Um... Does that mean that the range is going to be 442 or somewhere north of that? We will find out in the next few days when Lucid decide to tell us. Place your bets. 450? 460? 470? What do you reckon? Okay, okay, this is swimming in some rarefied air. It's going to be an expensive car. It's not going to be a car for the every woman and the every man. It is going to be, I think it starts at maybe 60, but will go up well above 100, and so $1,000. Uh, and so not for everyone, but we like these cars that do push the limits because we know how, I hope I don't offend anyone here, uh, we know how Elon hates to be beaten on any stat. And so, and of course, the team at Lucid, used to be at Tesla, will be releasing a car that will go significantly further than the Model S. Now, when the Porsche Taycan went, uh, uh, we can go around the Nürburgring faster than you can, Tesla, uh, Elon didn't just fight back. He launched a whole brand new car, the Tesla Model S Plaid, uh, which is going to be coming at the end of this year. It's the Model S reimagined, three motors, crazy performance, just so that he can say, ah, oh, now we go faster than the Porsche Taycan. I'm sure it's not just for that reason. But I'm, you know, making it a little more simple than it really is. But what about a car that goes so much further than the current Model S? Will Model S Plaid be able to match the Lucid Air? We'll wait and see. All of this, by the way, all of this raises the tide. It floats all boats. So I don't want to pitch one car company against another. I don't mind mentioning it because you and I win. As EVs get better, you and I are the winners. So let them go fight over specs and make the cars better and better and better all the time. Because it's not bad for us, is it? Now, Giga Berlin has a job posting, which I found interesting. Alex on Twitter, Alex Voigt, who is uh, at Alex underscore A-V-O-I-G-T, posted a LinkedIn ad for a cell process engineering process engineer. 
The job ad reads thus. Tesla is looking for a highly motivated process development engineer to create, develop and scale up manufacturing processes for our cutting edge Tesla battery cell manufacturing line. This role will invent, develop, scale up and optimize battery manufacturing processes. Within a couple uh, within a cross-functional engineering team responsible for the development life cycle and launch into manufacturing. In this role, you will work closely with many organizations, both internal and external to Tesla, taking new battery designs from initial concept through to full production. So uh, the Tesla battery day coming on the 22nd of September becomes less and less and less of a mystery the more we find out. Now they're looking for jobs in Berlin for people to work on battery cell manufacturing. If you want a hat tip to Alex for posting this, if you want to support him or find out more about what he does, his writing for various publications, uh, it's patreon.com slash slash Alex Voigt. So P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Alex V-O-I-G-T. Uh, thank you for your link on that one, Alex. Well, Tesla's paid almost $100 million for the land where it's building the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas. The 2,000-acre parcel of land is the largest piece of property the Tesla own on the planet and offers some great potential for expansion, says Electric. Now the original owners revealed how much Tesla just paid for the land because the company they bought it from are a publicly traded company and they had to release the information. Not that they sold it to Tesla, but simply they sold the parcel of land. Uh, now the land was bought not by Tesla, but through a subsidiary to throw people off the scent. Tesla made a company called Colorado River Project LLC. So if you were just looking through the files, you wouldn't immediately see the word Tesla jumping off the page. Uh, Tesla hasn't offered official timelines for the production of its vehicle programs to be built to Austin, but it's very aggressive. Heavy machinery is spotted seven days a week now since last month, and the site already, the construction site already looks so, so different to what it was just a month ago. You know, the great thing about it is, if you're Elon Musk, you could have to send somebody out to take a few pictures and Elon could be saying, oh, can you let me know how the uh, the development of this part of the site is going? I'd like to see it for myself. You don't need to. Tesla has so many fans that wherever they're building gigafactories, Shanghai, Berlin, now Austin, like the airspace above them is just so busy with drones. There are daily videos on YouTube. Just go search Tesla, Giga, Austin, drone and you'll see so many updated daily that's elon's that's the cheapest way for elon musk to check on progress just to make sure everyone's not taking a long lunch break <laughs> right let's talk about uh, an uh, the drive unit they're going to use for the mustang mac e there's a company called borg warner and they are building the integrated drive module they call it the idm the integrated drive module for the mustang mac e they're doing that for ford and it comes complete with a thermal management system as well and gearbox integrated with a motor and power electronics from certain other suppliers, not named, and showcases their expertise. They say Borg Warner designed and packaged the module along with the cooling and the lubrication to provide optimal thermal management for the Ford Mustang Mac E all in one assembly. Uh, beyond its architecture, which is very versatile, they say they deliver a highly integrated solution to the Mac E, uh, very low noise, vibration, harshness, and it is uh, being the that's going to be the the the, the supply or well, they're supplying the drive modules to Ford for the rear-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive GT uh, is going to involve a secondary drive unit from Borg Warner to power the front wheels as well. Uh, the production will st start, is slated to start, easy for me to say, later this year. In case you thought Ford were doing it all themselves, they are going out there and buying in the best bits they can find. E.ON, the energy company, E full stop O.N., and Nissan have installed 20 vehicle-to-grid chargers as part of a trial to establish the benefits for fleet operators. And they want to find more participants, says the website Fleet News. Large-scale V2G, vehicle-to-grid trials, are being done by Innovate UK. The project is now recruiting further participants for the trial, and they will deploy V2G chargers in organisations around the UK as well. E full stop ON Energy, customers who enter the V2G trial could save up to an equivalent of 10,000 miles a year. Equivalent cost £308. Moving on. Fiat Chrysler Automobile, FCA, can't lean on Tesla for their carbon credits forever. They've got to electrify and fast, which is why Jeep will, uh, one of their brands, Jeep, will, in short order, introduce a trio of 4xE, not 4x4, 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 
written down 4XE, but I think I pronounce it 4 by E. Uh, plug-in hybrids, and they're based on the Compass, the Renegade, the Wrangler. According to Spanish media, one of the former two will be the birthplace for their first pure electric model as well, says the Drive website. I'll attempt the publication name. Spain's Periodismo del Motor. Uh, I may have got that right. Uh, reports the first electric Jeep will be manufactured at uh, their Italian facility, making, at the moment, 450,000 compasses and renegades every single year. Both the Compass 4xE and the Renegade 4xE uh, will be built there, suggesting the plant will have the infrastructure in place to handle the high-voltage drivetrain components like those used in full EVs. In China, the electric vehicle startup. Chaopeng, or Chaopeng Motors is planning to, Xpeng, is planning to list its shares on the New York Stock Exchange, becoming the latest EV maker to do an IPO in the US to raise new capital to challenge Tesla. Xpeng is hoping to cash in on the current investor trend of pouring money into new EV startups, says Future Car. Well, Xpeng's intent to list on the New York Stock Exchange comes as Tesla shares have reached record highs recently and government support for NEVs, new energy vehicles in China, have been extended now through to 2022. The future's looking bright. New crop of startups as well. In others include uh, the US-listed NEO and Lee Auto, uh, no relation, which has just raised $1.4 billion in its own IPO. Finally, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash's 1970s Rolls Royce is still going. And Johnny Cash's roller is rolling on electric power. A classic long wheelbase 1970 Rolls Royce Silver Shadow. Uh, formerly owned by Johnny Cash, is back on the road with a new zero-emission spirit, says Digital Trends. A car and driver says that when the Rolls powertrain got to the end of its life, did 130,000 miles. Not sure how many of those were done by Mr Cash. Its owner decided to convert the ride into... An EV. It used a Tesla Model S donor vehicle. Uh, the work was done in, in Oregon, Albany, Oregon, by Shift Electric Vehicles. They've been converting cars to EV power for 11 years now. The company mostly works on classic cars and hot rods, so this was an ideal pairing for the company and the car. Shift EV has worked on other unusual conversions, like a 1904 electric woods road wagon, a 1978 Porsche 911, and an electric helicopter. I'll pop a link to Car and Driver in the show notes if you'd like to see it for yourself. Well, that's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Get in contact with uh, me anytime about any of the stories in the show. Email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com and I can send you that link if you're interested to the EV uh, Cincy, the Cincinnati Zoom call that we're doing on Thursday. If you're interested in the area, just uh, hit me up and I'll give you the details. There are 862 previous shows in the archive where you get your podcasts from, mostly news, fair few interviews in there as well. Uh, if you subscribe on your podcast app, you get the show first and free and automatically, and you haven't got to think about downloading it, so hit that subscribe button on YouTube or your favourite podcast app. Thank you very much to our premium partners on Patreon. That'll be you, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, and uh, NationalCarCharging.com in Hawaii, AlohaCharge.com, and also Derek Riley. He's got a new YouTube channel, and have you checked it out yet? What are you waiting for? It's called the EV Review Ireland YouTube channel. Uh, if you just search EV Review, you'll find it. You haven't got to be in Ireland to enjoy it. That's just where he is. Check it out and check out his videos. Have a wonderful day. Catch you for the Tuesday edition. In the meantime, remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>